Okay, so welcome back to the Oxford Discrete Maths and Probability Seminar. Um, it's a great pleasure to have for our second speaker this afternoon, Sergey Norin. Sergey, please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, Alex. Uh, thank you for giving me a, a chance to speak about this. Uh, so, uh, the bounds uh, on Ramsey numbers is a very classical uh, topic uh, in extremal graph theory. And uh, uh, in particular, uh, when I teach every fall the undergraduate class uh, on graph theory, I present uh, the well-known bounds. And then uh, every year I was saying that uh, making an exponential improvement uh, on the upper bound uh, is uh, one of the ways uh, you can become uh, somewhat famous uh, uh, in the area. And uh, last year, uh, I finally uh, was able to say, and they did it. Uh, there was an uh, amazing breakthrough, uh, which I will be talking about. And uh, this project, uh, it uh, uh, which is joined uh, with uh, undergraduate students Pars Gupta and Louis Wei uh, and uh, uh, PhD student uh, Jamin Jaya. Uh, it uh, came from the effort uh, of uh, understanding uh, this paper. But uh, I mean, let me start uh, uh, from the beginning, explaining all the background. Uh, I, I think uh, at uh, this seminar, there were uh, several talks uh, on uh, this unrelated breakthrough uh, fairly recently. So uh, it's probably something that uh, all of you know, but just in case, uh, let me uh, uh, say all the background. So uh, Ramsey theory, uh, it uh, uh, on the uh, most informal level is encompassed on the, in this maxim by, uh, uh, I think, Motskin that uh, complete disorder is impossible. So in every uh, sufficiently large system, uh, you are always uh, you will always be able to zoom in uh, onto some part uh, of a given size, which will have a very clear structure, and the systems uh, that. Uh, uh, of relevance for the classical Ramsey theorem are just graphs uh, which equivalently and more symmetrically can be thought of as uh, edge colorings of complete graphs. So we will, uh, for most of this talk, we will be working uh, with complete graphs uh, with uh, edges colored red and blue. Uh, and uh, in systems like this, the nicest possible Regular systems uh, are the uh, graphs where all the edges have the same color. Uh, so all edges are red, uh, or all, all edges are blue. And uh, the Ramsey numbers, which we want to study, are concerned with the quantitative aspects uh, of uh, the uh, largeness of this sufficiently large system. So the uh, main object that we are trying to understand uh, is uh, the Ramsey number, uh, RKL, uh, the smallest size of the complete graph, uh, such that uh, in a graph of the, in complete graph of this size, co colored red and blue, we can always find a completely red subgraph on K vertices, so with all edges red, or a completely blue subgraph on L vertices. Uh, and uh, let me just quickly say some standard things uh, about uh, this Ramsey numbers. Uh, it's uh, clearly uh, symmetric uh, with respect to switching K and L. It corresponds to switching the colors. The Ramsey number R1L is 1. So if you want to find a, a complete subgraph uh, on one vertex, uh, then uh, you can do it uh, regardless of the color, as long as you have one vertex. R2L 
uh, is equal to L for every L at least two. That's uh, easy because if you want a, a red K2, you can do it as long as there are red edges. And if there are no red edges, you need to have uh, L vertices uh, to have a uh, blue KL. And uh, a classical uh, uh, puzzle, which is often used to introduce Ramsey numbers, says that R33 is six, uh, which can be rephrased as saying that in a group of six people, if you want, uh, there's always a group uh, of uh, three people who pairwise know each other or three people who are pairwise strangers. And the Ramsey theorem, uh, which started uh, this Ramsey theory and started an investigation of Ramsey numbers, is from 1929, and it just says that uh, uh, such a number exists. And uh, uh, if uh, uh, if I correctly recall, the original proof of Ramsey was actually a non-quantitative. Uh, it, uh, it's an interesting uh, uh, method where he proved uh, the corresponding result for uh, infinite uh, uh, monochromatic subgraphs uh, in an infinite graph, which implies the finite result. But uh, Erdos uh, and Zekeres gave uh, quantitative bounds uh, on uh, uh, Ramsey numbers in 1935. Uh, and these bounds, uh, which uh, I will be frequently refer referring back to, uh, they uh, uh, somehow uh, form a uh, uh, a baseline, a standard uh, to compare to. Uh, so they have shown that uh, the Ramsey number KL is at most a binomial coefficient, which is roughly K plus L choose K. And in particular, when we want uh, the uh, red KK, uh, the red subgraph and blue subgraph to be of the same size, uh, so we're interested in the Ramsey number RKK, the so-called diagonal case, which is uh, uh, of the uh, perhaps the most studied then that gives a bound uh, roughly on the order of 2k choose k. Uh, so that's uh, about uh, 4 to the power k uh, with uh, some polynomial, uh, uh, polynomial uh, extra factor. And uh, just for comparison, uh, Erdos, uh, in the one of the first applications of probabilistic method, proved a lower bound uh, of uh, square root of 2 to the k uh, on the diagonal uh, Ramsey numbers. So the difference between upper and lower bound is, uh, in, the, uh, uh, is the linear factor uh, in the exponent or, the, uh, or in the base of the exponent. And those differ by a factor uh, uh, of about four. And there have been, uh, over the years, uh, these uh, uh, upper bounds on the diagonal no Ramsey numbers have been well studied. Uh, so this is uh, starting uh, from the Erdos-Zekres bound uh, listed above. And uh, uh, the bounds are written uh, uh, for RK plus one, K plus one for simplicity, but it doesn't change much. And so the Zekres bound has been suc successively improved uh, by lower order factors, uh, which was first uh, logarithmic in an unpublished work of Rodo, and then uh, increasingly better, starting with a uh, work of Thomason in 1980s. Uh, so the improvement was first uh, polynomial uh, in uh, K, which is a, if you, if you think about it uh, uh, in terms of the logarithm of Ramsey number, so what, uh, if you think about what happens in the exponent, it's a single logarithmic factor, and then Conlon improved it uh, to almost uh, uh, the, uh, square of the logarithm in the exponent, and then 
saw optimizing further Conlon's method, improved it uh, to just a square uh, of the logarithm in the exponent. And these three last improvements, they were based uh, on the uh, 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 exploiting quasi-randomness properties uh, of uh, uh, Ramsey graphs. So in some way, uh, uh, exploiting the fact that a graph that is close, uh, that doesn't contain a, a, a red KK uh, or a blue KK and close to the upper bound, must be close to a random graph. And random graphs uh, without red or blue KK are actually more, much smaller. But uh, 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 this method, at least uh, the way it was uh, implemented, seems to be uh, have to have been completely optimized in the work of Ashwin Sa. So it's been published in 2023, but I think it's from 2020. And uh, but and uh, so for comparison, so these improvements are logarithmic in the exponent, and what we are searching for is uh, something that's linear in the exponent, so much larger. And finally, in the surprising, uh, amazing breakthrough, uh, this uh, improvement have been made uh, last year by uh, Campus, Griffiths, Morris, and Sahasra Buddha. Uh, they have shown that uh, uh, AKK is uh, uh, at most four minus uh, something to the K. And in fact, even the uh, improvement that they make uh, on uh, on the base of the exponent is not negligible. It's small, but it is a meaningful constant. So something uh, uh, about one over one hundred twenty, just uh, slightly uh, less than one over a hundred, uh, and uh, so. And their methods are is completely different uh, from the uh, uh, this uh, effective quasi-randomness methods uh, of Thomas and Canlon and, and Sa. Uh, and uh, in particular, so this breakthrough somehow it differed uh, in a way from uh, uh, other big breakthroughs uh, in combinatorics. Uh, which are uh, which have been recently made, which uh, uh, somehow say as how Huang's proof of sensitivity conjecture or Dvir's solution to Kakea problems. These were uh, elegant one-page applications of algebra algebraic methods, or they were uh, some other uh, amazing improvements uh, of say. Uh, uh, absorber met, uh, uh, amazing uh, uh, applications of absorber method where there is a uh, sophisticated, well-developed machinery. Uh, this proof is long, uh, complicated, but uh, seemingly, uh, el I mean, elementary and uh, ad hoc. It didn't use anything from uh, outside uh, uh, particularly outside of the proof. And uh, so after I mentioned this proof uh, in my class, uh, uh, a couple of students, so Pas Gupta and Louis Wei, they were interested in understanding this proof. Uh, and that's what started our project. So our goal was uh, to understand this proof. Uh, and uh, potentially, I mean, maybe find uh, uh, some uh, other ways of applying, of applying this technique. Actually, uh, based on the problems that uh, I'm interested in, uh, one of my hopes was uh, to perhaps uh, see if this technique apply to the erdos heinel conjecture, which is a well-studied and very difficult uh, conjecture, which also searches for monochromatic clicks uh, in graphs. But uh, one of the 
As we started understanding the proofs, one of the first things I became convinced of is that uh, the methods are uh, very different in nature from what uh, will uh, uh, would be useful for Ertesheim. But uh, one of the uh, things that, I mean, we first wanted uh, to do with the proof uh, is uh, to convince ourselves of correctness. Uh, I mean, it is a, uh, I mean, one thing about that proof, uh, it, uh, uh, it is based on something that is called uh, a book algorithm, uh, which is an algorithm working with certain substructure in our red blue colored graph uh, in a fairly complex manner, controlling several uh, uh, parameters along the way. And uh, even though, I mean, certainly based uh, on the acceptance of the paper, we believe uh, that the improvement have been made. It actually takes uh, almost 30 pages in the proof to convince uh, ourselves, or at least it took us reading about 30 pages to convince that any improvement has been made. And that somehow, I mean, uh, uh, that's one of the things that uh, I do hope uh, to uh, uh, improve upon on this talk. So I want to be able uh, in this uh, 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 in this presentation to convince you that some improvement can be made using Campus Griffiths Morris Sehesrabadi methods uh, within this talk. So not really the uh, uh, that uh, proof of the theorem, but some related improvement, which is still unexpected. Uh, and uh, so, uh, we, so we, uh, as we read the paper, we were eventually able to uh, rephrase the argument uh, in some way, uh, in particular, getting rid of the algorithm making the proof uh, inductive rather than algorithmic. And uh, here is uh, uh, our main result, our final theorem. Uh, it is some bound uh, which is improving uh, on the classical Erdős-Zekeres bound, uh, which I have shown you above, by an exponential factor. And uh, this uh, exponential factor is actually moderately large. Uh, so if you plug in uh, k equal l uh, into, uh, into this formula, then we get uh, that uh, diagonal Ramsey numbers uh, are at most something like 3.7992, and I mean 3.8 uh, is a, a nice clean number close to the best bound that we can prove. So we can... Uh, by uh, rephrasing and uh, optimizing uh, the uh, uh, campus et al. Uh, new bound, uh, we are able to do uh, uh, to achieve a better result. Okay, so what I would like to talk about uh, uh, in most of the remainder of my talk uh, is. Uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, some of our arguments, and let me just uh, uh, clarify uh, how what we did compares uh, to uh, the Campos Griffiths Griffiths Morris and Sakas Rabadi proof. We don't actually use any new combinatorial ideas. So uh, most uh, of the uh, improvements are in. Uh, kind of repackaging uh, their argument. Uh, in fact, I mean, one of the things that I kind of like about our arguments, not only we don't use any, use any new combinatorial ideas, in the part of the proof that I'm gonna show you, we even don't use about two thirds of their combinatorial ideas. We extract a very, uh, uh, 
uh, in certain re off diagonal regime, so when we are working with Ramsey number RKL and L is a bit smaller than K, let's say at most half K, we're able to get uh, an exponential improvement uh, by uh, doing uh, uh, by doing uh, very uh, just a fraction uh, of uh, of the uh, using only a fraction of the idea. And let me try to show you uh, that part. But first, actually, to motivate the way we do this part, let me do the erdos zekeres proof, the classical proof of the upper bound, but slightly rephrased, uh, which uh, will make uh, uh, our proof uh, somehow, uh, by rephrasing erdos zekeres proof, I I'm trying to make our proof uh, look similar to their proof. So I'm going to try to prove the following. For each, uh, uh, think of it as a constant between 0 and 1x, for all integers k, k and l, uh, Ramsey number uh, rkl is at most uh, x to the power minus k times 1 minus x to the power 1 minus, uh, to the power minus l. So if you actually optimize, choose the optimum x in this formula, which it's easy to see, it's k over k plus l, then you get uh, what essentially is up to uh, low order terms, uh, the bound, uh, uh, the z bound, k plus l choose k. Okay, and uh, the way one can prove this bound, it's really uh, exactly the z uh, inductive argument, but uh, uh, it's somehow pretty convenient to apply with this bound. So we do induction on k plus l. There's a base case to be checked, but uh, it's, if k or l are, are one, it's easy. And now we uh, want to prove that uh, the inequality for given k and l. So we choose uh, the maximum n uh, so that kn can be colored with no red k, k or blue k, l. And we, we look at the coloring. And we look at the vertex and look at uh, its set of blue neighbors and its set of red neighbors, so which we denote by NBV and NR. And uh, the blue neighborhood must have size at most RKL minus one minus one, uh, because if in the blue neighborhood we find a blue uh, KL minus one, then we add V to it and we find a blue KL. Uh, so there is no blue KL minus one, there is no uh, red KK in the blue neighborhood, uh, which gives us this bound uh, on the blue neighborhood of V, and we use induction hypothesis. Uh, obtaining, uh, as shown, the bound on the blue neighborhood of V. Uh, in the same way, we get a bound in the top line on the red neighborhood of V, uh, and th therefore we get the number on the, uh, the bound on the total number of vertices, which is uh, the size of the red neighborhood plus size of the blue neighborhood plus one accounting for the vertex V. And then once you sum it up, uh, the, uh, conveniently, uh, the meaningful terms that we get from induction hypothesis sum up exactly to uh, x to the power minus k times one minus x to the power minus l. So we get uh, uh, actually exactly uh, the inequality we want. So that's the, I mean, that's the same proof as usually is taught about Ramsey numbers, except uh, the bounds that are inductively proved are typically uh, uh, binomial coefficients. And here we express it in this uh, form uh, as uh, uh, exponents uh, with powers being minus k and minus l. Okay, so now uh, with this in hand, let me talk uh, about uh, about our or uh, compass at all proof, and uh, so the main object that uh, that uh, we 
work with uh, is uh, uh, the following. It's a pair of disjoint set of vertices, which for a lack of a better term, we call a candidate. Uh, so it's a this candidate is a structure which we preserve uh, throughout induction. And our goal, uh, and so it's a pair of disjoint set X and Y, and the intuition is that X is going to shrink somewhat faster than Y, which is uh, uh, shown in the picture. And we want to find either a red KK across two sets or a blue KL in Y or an, a blue KT in X. And this K and L and T are going to be three different parameters. L would be typically bigger than T, but that doesn't really matter in the argument. So the pair is called KLT good if we can uh, find one of the sets uh, in the picture. So that's pretty much the same uh, object that Campos uh, et al. work with. And uh, another key parameter that uh, we care about is the density of red edges between sets X and Y. So that's another, I mean, important idea from the, uh, from the Campos proof, uh, Campos et al. proof, uh, is uh, that uh, they somehow they, uh, treat the colors asymmetrically, which is already clear from the previous picture, even if uh, uh, we want the same size initially uh click in either colors so they uh break uh they break uh symmetry between the colors and uh so the uh the composite tall improvement uh, uh as i mentioned it's an algorithm and it tracks uh, a lot of different parameters throughout the algorithm uh, of the system of this candidate involving the sizes of the sets X and Y the, and the density uh, of uh, red edges between sets X and Y. And uh, so the analysis is quite complicated involving in fact a certain discrete gradation uh, of the densities uh, beyond certain threshold. Uh, in particular, the fact that they prove about the candidate uh, depends not only at the particular parameters of the candidate, but on the history of the algorithm that arrives to that point, which is also, I mean, that's an uh, in some things that makes things easier, in another things uh, uh, somewhat more complicated. And uh, one uh, uh, of uh, uh, the changes that we make is that basically we uh, focus on a single parameter that we track uh, inductively, which is the excess number of red edges beyond certain density. So that's kind of the main function I want to look at. We fix a uh, density P and we are interested uh, for a candidate in the function FP of XY, which is by how, by how much do we have more red edges between sets X and Y than we would have had if the density was P, which is P times size of X times size of Y. So that's kind of the, rather than uh, keeping track uh, of many parameters, at least for now, we'll just uh, focus on this excess number of edges. Uh, one uh, result about uh, this excess number of edges, which is uh, uh, proved easily, I'm not going to show you the proof, but it's just two lines, is a uh, it's convexity. Uh, in some sense, it uh, resembles uh, a flag algebra calculation. So if you are used to uh, counting some small subgraphs uh, in a graph uh, and proving inequality about them, this is very much uh, 
this type of result, it says the following. Uh, if we uh, want to restrict our candidate by taking a vertex in X and looking at its red neighborhood in Y, so these are the sets which are indicated uh, by a kind of goldish background on the picture, then on average, the function fp reduces by a factor at most p uh, if you do this restriction, which is, I mean, it's something that you would expect uh, if uh, edges would be roughly random. And what this lemma says is that it cannot be much worse. So we can control by how much this function fp decreases on average uh, if we restrict set y to the red neighborhood uh, of a single vertex uh, in x. That's the point of this lemma. So that's the first ingredient. And uh, here is uh, the main inductive lemma, which replaces erdos zekeres proof in this context. So uh, this lemma, uh, which uh, I mean, I'd like to, to convince you that it's about as difficult as the erdos zekeres proof, and it is the heart uh, of uh, our proof uh, in the off-diagonal case. Uh, it uh, gives a bound on this excess number of edges, which is sufficient to guarantee that my candidate is a uh, KLT good. So for given numbers K, L, and T, uh, we, were, we are able, if the excess number of edges is this, whatever this expression uh, is, then we can find uh, appropriately sized click. Okay, so now let me go through the proof of this lemma. I mean, that's uh, the only proof I really want to do. Uh, and it is pretty much a uh, Erdős-Zekres proof. So first of all, by the previous convexity lemma, we find a vertex V in X so that my uh, function FP reduces by a factor at most P. So let's find such a vertex. Uh, so now if we restrict y to this gold part, a uh, function fp fell by a factor only p. Now we will further try to restrict x to either blue neighborhood of v in x or red neighborhood of v in x. So in some sense, we are doing erdos zekeres proof in x. Uh, so let me look at the red neighborhood of v uh, in x. Now, if the pair uh, of red neighborhood and yr is k minus one lt good, so if you can find either red k minus k k minus one across or uh, blue k l or k t in the appropriate set, then we are done because uh, red k minus one k k minus one across. Uh, we can add v to it again, just like an average Zekeres proof. So it's not k minus one lt good, and that gives us by induction hypothesis a bound on the size uh, of uh, this excess function uh, for a pair xr y r for a candidate xr y r, uh, which is a uh, smaller by a factor uh, roughly x plus some uh, other tiny improvement, uh, which uh, uh, will help us. So we get one inequality applying induction hypothesis to X R Y R, And in the same way, uh, if we apply induction hypothesis to a pair X B Y R, we can reduce the size of the blue click, which we're searching for in X. Uh, and we get another inequality comparing uh, the our function f for this pair to the original function. And then we collect these two inequalities together. Uh, so the, our function f for the original pair times p uh, is at most the function 
uh, for when we restrict to red neighborhood in Y, which is a linear subject to dividing uh, X into three sets. Two of them are bounded by induction. And one, uh, the FP of VYR, it's this excess number of red edges. It's at most the total number of edges between V and Y. So it's at most size of Y. So we obtain certain inequality. And uh, now we can just plug in, uh, because we have a lower bound on FP, uh, this inequality and get lower bound on the size of Y, which is just the lower bound, uh, uh, lower bound X to the power minus one minus K times one minus X to the power minus L, uh, which guarantees that Y contains uh, our red KK or blue KL that we want to find uh, uh, by erdos zekeres bound. Okay, so that's the proof uh, of the slam on top. It is uh, essentially erdos zekeres proof applied to this parameter with an actual erdos zekeres bound plugged in at the end. Uh, and uh, basically the bound is in this particular form uh, so that the induction goes smoothly. Okay, uh, so what does this give us? Uh, well, one thing is that uh, we needed uh, L and T to be different because for inductive purposes, but really we want a uh, L to be equal to T, right? We want a, a blue clique of size L. So this is a lemma written out with uh, L equal to T. And uh, from this, uh, we derive an explicit bound uh, on uh, uh, Ramsey numbers uh, as written below. And let me quickly, so that is a, uh, uh, the proof of this is under a page from the lemma, uh, which says that for P in a certain regime, uh, we get uh, uh, this type of bound. So again, there are exponents uh, with K and L in the power of the exponents, uh, some extra factor in front, uh, and that's up to upper bound in, on Ramsey numbers. And the proof is the following. So uh, let me just uh, try to explain uh, where things come from. So we'd like to apply a lemma. So we want to find a candidate where the excess number uh, of uh, red edges beyond density P uh, is big enough uh, to apply the lemma. Basically, as soon as our density of red edges a tiny bit bigger than P, then we divide uh, the uh, vertices of the graph at random into two parts, and we get that uh, the, uh, the number of red edges uh, between the parts is uh, uh, roughly uh, something that's quadratic uh, in the size of my graph. Uh, but uh, if our density is uh, less than P, then uh, we cannot apply this. And, uh, but what we can apply is uh, extract, is just a Sekeresh argument. Uh, take a blue neighborhood of one vertex, which would be at least size of one minus P of the total number of vertices and apply induction hypothesis to this blue neighborhood. So we can either pay a factor one minus P to reduce L by one, or we can apply uh, the bound from the lemma, more or less that's the, that's the point. Uh, and bound from the lemma, this FPXY, it's roughly, as I was trying to mention, roughly square of the number of vertices. 
So the bound on the number of vertices from the lemma would be something like x to the power mi minus k over 2 times the factor to the right to the power minus l over 2. And that leads to a natural equation that what we really want is that the loss is the same in both of these operations. So 1 minus x times p minus x uh, is equal to 1 minus p squared. And that's a quadratic equation which we solve. And that gives, uh, uh, so that gives this particular bound. OK, so that's uh, uh, an explanation. It's not a complete proof, but it's an explanation of this part uh, of the proof, uh, which uh, uh, really doesn't hide much. Uh, I mean, it's pretty short. And uh, finally, now we have a P, which can be chosen to be anything, and we just optimize. For given k and l, we figure out what is the best p. And I mean, it's not the most beautiful thing ever, but uh, you, solve the, uh, you solve the differential equation. It's just uh, some, something more or less. I mean, it's a ratio of two linear fi fi functions in k and l, and you get uh, the bound in the theorem below. OK, uh, so I'm claiming I'm not sure how much I can claim this. That I more or less told you a complete proof of this bound. Uh, I, I hid very little, and all of this can be reconstructed uh, by hand. And this we can already compare to the erdos zekeres bound. So let's. So the erdos zekeres bound uh, is roughly on the order k plus l over k to the k times k plus l over l to the l. Uh, so that's kind of the optimal x and y, uh, which you can substitute in the inequality I've proved. So therefore, the previous theorem uh, tells us that the ratio uh, of uh, uh, Ramsey numbers RKL to the erdos zekeres bound is at most this expression uh, on the slide. And uh, so have we, have we improved on Ramsey numbers? Well, so let me uh, look at this expression. The, uh, the, re the fraction on the right, it's at most 1. k plus 2l over k divided by k plus l squared uh, is at most 1. The fraction on the left, well, Unfortunately, it's not at most one for k equal to l. In fact, the whole thing doesn't work for k equal to l yet. Uh, but if l is much smaller than k, then it's about root of 5 plus 1 over 4 uh, to the l. And that's an expon a substantial exponential improvement. So for l much smaller than k, it actually improves a lot uh, on erdos zekeres bound. And in fact, this bound is already an exponential improvement for L uh, less than 0 0.7, roughly, a bit worse, of k. So we can, so this argument already, uh, which is just a restatement uh, of the uh, erdos zekeres uh, induction reformulation using uh, this uh, Beautiful idea, which I mean, I, I really don't know where it came from, like how to arrive at the idea of looking at these candidates, at this particular structure. Uh, but uh, if we look at the structure and carefully do induction, we make this improvement, uh, which is a, I mean, and because we were able kind of straightforwardly to optimize throughout, this improvement is actually already larger than uh, Campos Griffiths Moyes uh, Serhis improvement. It's about uh, e to the minus L over 5 for L much smaller than K. Uh, the improvement is about factor of 4 worse. OK. Uh, but uh, so at some point after reading uh, the uh, their paper, uh, we had this argument. So, and this argument is roughly three pages. 
and it more or less uh, substitutes the first 30 pages of their paper. And we were fairly happy. We can do the 30 pages in three pages, but we couldn't do the diagonal bound at all. We couldn't, uh, so our improvement didn't help. So in fact, we couldn't do their argument without repeating their whole argument from the beginning, throwing, throwing ours away. And we were stuck, stuck at that for a while, uh, for more than a month, for about a month. So that was, uh, that was an issue. So things are not quite uh, as nice uh, after, and I'm not going to show you complete proof, but let me show you something about how to do further improvements. And we do have to steal more ideas uh, from, uh, uh, from, from uh, Compass et al. proof. Eventually, we do reuse pretty much all combinatorial ideas. The final proof is shorter, but uh, uses most of the ideas. So first of all, here is the first way of improvement. And uh, this is somehow an idea which is uh, important to what we do. Uh, we began with uh, using the erdos sekeres bound in the form RKL is at most x to the power mi minus k times uh, 1 minus x to the power minus L. Well, let, uh, let R be the set of all pairs x, y for which uh, we can make such a bound. Somehow, looking at the set R, I think of it as a dual problem, trying to understand the set R to the problem of estimating Ramsey numbers. So we are trying to understand for which pairs X and Y we can write down inequality on this slide. And uh, the other secret proof says that we can do it for pairs X and Y as long as X plus Y is at most one. But uh, if we look back uh, at the uh, theorems that we proved uh, uh, on top of this slide, it actually shows that we can, uh, we can do it for a larger set of pairs. So for certain pairs uh, of this form, uh, ex expanding the our set script up by certain points. And why is it important? Because we did use erdos zekeres bound uh, in our proof to plug it in, in some sense, in a base case. Uh, and now we can amplify. We Now we know more about this set, we can plug in better bounds. So that's one idea. And this is a... a kind of a, a picture which is uh, in which I'm trying to show the extent of our improvements in this dual form of the region R. So the blue line is the erdos zekeres bound. Uh, so everything below this line lies in the region script R. The red uh, Lie, the red segments above the blue line show our off-diagonal improvement. So the improvements that we've made so far. The green line further, which extends the region R throughout, is what we are able to show eventually, which pretty much immediately implies our 3.8 bound. Not quite, but almost. And finally, the somewhat uh, awkward blue shape, uh, shape uh, uh, on top shows the maximal possible extent, the region R. So, so whatever is past those barricades, the segments on top, we know does not lie in the region. That's the maximum extent. So this picture is also kind of pictorially shows the improvements that we have made to Ramsey numbers uh, on this exponential scale. So we added the region between green and blue lines, and the maximum we can hope for is towards the blue border on top. 
So it's it's a small sliver, but it's a noticeable sliver somehow that I mean that visually represents the improvement. And this is a, a corner of it. So we can plug in. Uh, uh, so by using this understanding, so we can replace one minus x to the power minus l uh, in our bound by uh, any y to the power minus l, as long as the pair xy lies, for technical reasons, in the interior of this region. And now we need to skip lower order terms. And uh, our final theorem is an even more complicated uh, result uh, where we also, instead of uh, having a p minus x uh, as the last term, which is raised to the power, you can think of it as minus l. We have a, some other parameter mu, which depends uh, on x in a much more complicated form. So uh, let me just throw the theorem uh, here. You don't necessarily need to uh, understand the details. But uh, we actually, I mean, so we make uh, uh, various technical changes. So in particular, instead of bounding uh, our excess number of edges, we start bounding higher moments, higher powers of this extra, uh, extra number of edges uh, and takes the limit of these powers raised to infinity. So looking at these high moments is important. And we also use some other uh, combinatorial ideas from the proof. And eventually, so what comes out, the, the theorem is the, our variant uh, of, the, uh, of the book algorithm. Now, this tells us that uh, if we have certain density of red edges, uh, and then, and our graph is sufficiently large, uh, subject to certain parameters, then we find uh, red KK or blue K. If we don't have this density of red edges, then our plan is still the same. We take a blue vertex, uh, 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 we take a vertex and we restrict to blue neighborhood and we do induction uh, on L. Now, all together, this uh, gives a bound uh, on the Ramsey numbers, which is expressed in the following theorem, which is just a differential equation which comes out of all of these preparations. It's complicated. Uh, I don't know how to, and it involves this region R, which we don't quite understand, but we can increasingly uh, do better and better in. But we can approximate the solutions. Like we can, we can kind of fit, uh, 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 do numerical approximations uh, of the solutions of differentials equations that come out. And uh, eventually, uh, uh, our bound. Okay, uh, I think I'm missing a key. Uh, our bound, uh, which is in the theorem that I announced, uh, so obtained by this optimization, uh, let me just quickly show you back the theorem. So that's, that's what we get uh, by uh, optimizing the corresponding system of differential equations. So we obtain uh, this function. And uh, this uh, another graph, which I wanted to show you, also uh, suppose somehow to graphically show our improvements by how much we are improving on our Zekresh bound in the end. Well, so we are improving, uh, here the improvement is measured by uh, the 
uh, e to some power times L, where L is the small of the two numbers K and L. So if L is much smaller than K, then proven by a factor about uh, e to the L over four. That's our extra improvement. When L and K are equal, uh, our improvement is about e to the L over 20. But I mean, still uh, somewhat substantial. So, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the off-diagonal case, which was also uh, easier uh, for uh, Campos, Griffiths, uh, Moyes, and Sassarabadi, uh, is pretty easy. After that, we still need to uh, introduce a fair bit of technicalities. I mean, that takes, uh, I mean, under 10 dense pages. Uh, but uh, uh, we get a... Uh, 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 we get uh, significant improvements everywhere. And I think I'm almost uh, out of time. Uh, let me just mention that, uh, I mean, as one uh, of the uh, our goals, we try to improve on multicolor Ramsey numbers, where, I mean, so the uh, problem is the same, uh, except uh, rather than uh, two colors, we have several colors. And our off-diagonal argument that I showed you goes through, but our diagonal argument doesn't at all. There are technical difficulties. But uh, very recently, uh, the group behind the original improvement, together with Ballester, Bolobash, uh, Hurley, and Tiba, uh, managed to also improved diagonal uh, Ramsey numbers by an exponential factor. Uh, so that's uh, the meaning behind this theorem. So the, we had exponential improvements uh, for uh, two color Ramsey numbers. Now there's an exponential improvement uh, uh, for multicolor Ramsey numbers. Uh, and uh, 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 they also gave a, 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 another different, a shorter proof uh, uh, of the two-color exponential improvement. Uh, although it's still, I mean, not just an uh, inductive thing, it's, they still, I mean, consider a variant of their algorithmic approach in implementing the book algorithm. Uh, so to conclude, uh, let me uh, uh, mention, so, so the currently the diagonal, the bounds on the diagonal two color Ramsey numbers, they stand bet uh, between uh, root two to the power K uh, and three, 3.8 roughly to the power K. Uh, so 3.8, right, it's not exact and one can further you know, fiddle with our uh, argument uh, or with the original argument to get something slightly better. But actually, I don't see much room beyond what we did. So uh, offhand, uh, I don't see, I would be very surprised if without much new ideas, one can say improve this 3.8 to 3.75. I mean, we tried hard to optimize the numbers here, unlike the original group. Uh, but the lower bound, uh, somehow, uh, improvement there, let me mention improvement there. The best lower bound uh, is due to Spencer from 1975. It it's uh, the square root of 2 to the k times some linear function in k. It uh, improves on the original uh, bound of Erdős by a factor of two. So since the first quantitative good bound exponential, the only improvement has been by Spencer by a factor of constant factor two. In fact, uh, 10 years ago in their survey, Conlon, Fox, and Sudakov uh, asked to improve the lower bound by a factor of one plus epsilon. So in the upper bound, the base of the exponent was changed. 
in the lower bound, the question is uh, much, uh, I mean, the goal is much more modest, improve the square root of 2 to 1.42. Uh, that seems, I mean, that's open. I mean, any improvement there. In particular, I mean, I don't know what, I mean, I'm not an expert in the area, what the experts think. I mean, it makes me kind of want to believe that the law, right, the truth is closer to the lower bound. Uh, okay, uh, I think that's all I wanted. Uh, I'll say uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sergey. Um, would anyone like to ask some questions? Actually, maybe I'll ask. So just in, in the multicolor case, do you think there's uh, any hope to improve numbers a bit? And... Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, so I, I have to say uh, I haven't understood the new proof yet. Uh, I, I have been postponing it because of the middle of semester. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'd like, I mean, yeah, I'd like to do that. But uh, so they're, they're bound, I mean, they don't get somehow, uh, a, so in this theorem, right, this delta, I mean, it goes, uh, it goes to zero, as a, it depends on the number of colors and goes to zero as the number of colors increases. And there is no reason it should, it actually should go to infinity, if anything. Uh, I mean, it might. Uh, so the gap is somehow actually as a num in the regime number of colors going to infinity is bigger. Yeah, I mean, I think it would be nice to explore, but yeah, I mean, the, I mean first, I mean, just like this two color case, the first step would be to steal all the ideas from the experts and then see what we can do. I mean, some of, some of the authors are on the on the in in the audience, but I, I I think there's some very clever things going on in that proof too. Yeah. Do Do we have any other questions? Okay. In that case, um, I'll let me. Thank Sergey for a great talk. That was fascinating. Um, I'll stop the recording and then we can unmute and applaud. If I can figure out how to stop the recording, there we are. <laughs>